Did you grow up playing the Game Boy Color and have fond memories of playing these at night when you can't see the screen at all? Getting yelled at by your parents to turn off the car light because it's blinding them while they're driving. So you just sit there in the back seat praying that the street lights are going to come and grace your screen just enough so you can defeat the Elite Four. Well, those days are behind us. Today I'm going to show you exactly how you can mod your Game Boy Color to have a beautiful IPS display. Roll the intro. Now this is going to require some tools. Now I'm not sponsored, even though I wish I was, hit me up, I fix it. But this toolkit, the Protect toolkit, it will have everything you need to tackle like any console or phone or any piece of electronics. I, I love this thing. So I'll have a link in the description for this. I will also link the two screwdrivers that you absolutely need down below. It's like six bucks or something on Amazon. But obviously you're going to need a Game Boy. And for this kit in particular, we are doing the we're doing this one. Sorry, I, I, there's so many mod kits and I don't remember all the names. This is the one that I use all the time. This is my go-to kit. Ever since I got it, I have not stopped using it. Except for one time because I got a shell that didn't work with this. And let's talk about that real quick. This screen lens is laminated to the display. And since it's like this in this weird shape, as far as I know, there might be a workaround. But as far as I know, you can only use it with funny playing shells. Because this is a funny playing kit. And these shells are specifically designed for this kit. That is one of the downfalls to this. You can't just use any shell. And it makes it really simple and really clean. But they do have some really cool shells, as you can see. So if you're one of those people that wants to use the original shell or whatever, you can't. The good news is you can get the mod kit, the shell, the buttons, the everything you need except for the Game Boy. You can get everything from RetroGameRepairShop.com and save 10% with my code, Jake. 10% off everything store-wide. Normally this particular Suicune shell will come with blue buttons, which I'll show some B-roll of the blue buttons that it comes with. Sometimes they come with membranes, sometimes they don't. You might as well just buy some membranes or ask Retro Game Repair Shop directly. They'll probably leave a comment down below if they include some. We're going with white buttons and white membranes for this. I think it's gonna look really clean. It's gonna go great with the white lens that we've got, so. With this particular ribbon cable, and it has to be this specific one, so. If it's the V2.6, it'll say right there at the bottom, V2.6. That makes it so you don't have to solder if you don't want to. Otherwise, some of the other versions of this kit require you to solder. So sort of a soldering iron is required. I highly recommend soldering on this kit. The logo on this kit lights up where it says Game Boy Color. And you have to solder to get this to be able to change colors. So by default, it's gonna be in red. And if red doesn't go with your shell, like it doesn't go with this one, then you're SOL. <laughs> you can adjust the brightness without soldering, but it's also not gonna be as bright if you don't solder. Soldering the power wire to the actual Game Boy is gonna make the screen even brighter than the no solder way. Hopefully all of that is clear. Otherwise, the other things I recommend, some sort of flux to make soldering easier but I feel like that goes along with the soldering iron but I also highly recommend I don't think it's required anymore but I'm scared of shorting things so I do it every time flush cutters I'll get to why later and uh, Kapton tape and obviously some sort of scissors to cut the Kapton tape I think that is all the things that are required oh isopropyl alcohol sorry future me get IPA. 99% is the best, but even 70% will be okay. Also, fiberglass pens are awesome for cleaning things. I would highly recommend one of these. I will try to have links to everything I just talked about and everything I will talk about in the description. If I'm missing something, please just kindly let me know in the comments and I'll add it. Anyways, I've rambled way too long. Let's actually get to the build portion of this. Right after this word from our sponsor. I'm just kidding. I don't have any sponsors, but I wanted to put an ad there so if you anyways flip off the battery cover uh, and then grab your tri-wing screwdriver there are six screws here there's two at the top two in the middle and two in the battery hole battery hole sure we'll go with that normally I show each and every one I'm just gonna just go and just lift up I like to grab from down here and the cart slot to pull up 
Don't worry about the screws unless you want to reuse them for some reason. I used to be very against using the aftermarket screws, but from companies like Funny Playing, uh, they're pretty good stuff now. We're going to be using the aftermarket screws. Swapping over to the Phillips head. Technically, it's JIS. It doesn't really matter as long as you're slow and careful. They're practically the same thing. They're both cross head. I've been yelled at before, so I'm gonna mention it. If you have an iFixit toolkit, you'll have a JAS bit. Sorry, I didn't really show those off. There are only three Phillips screws, JAS, on the inside. There, there, and there. Usually every screw hole will have a circle around it in the motherboard. Here is the ribbon cable for the screen, and there are two little tabs locking it into place. Just push up with your fingernail on both sides. Sometimes the other side will go back down a little bit. Just push it up and then you can lift up the Game Boy by the cart slot. Usually it comes right out, but if it's a little stiff, you can hold it by the ribbon cable and pull out. If it's really giving you trouble, keep pushing on this. Maybe it's not all the way out. One thing I will recommend that everybody do, especially if you're soldering already, I have several tutorials on this. Just clean your power switch real quick. If you have something like a fiberglass pen, or if you don't want to spend any money, you probably have some sort of Q-tips lying around. Put a little IPA on a Q-tip and just clean it out so you can actually see the metal. Most of these are covered in dirt. Whenever I test and fix all the Game Boys that I get in from Japan, I always clean the power switch now. Even if you're not having troubles with turning it on, it's just worth it to go and clean it it's probably pretty gross. This is really all we need from here. I've already cleaned this board, because when I get all these Game Boys in hand, I will test them, fix what needs to be fixed, and clean everything up. So it's just ready for me on my streams that I mentioned earlier, on Mondays and Wednesdays. Even though it's already clean, I'll show you exactly how to clean it here. Take your IPA, spray it a couple times, grab your mom's toothbrush, and just scrub away. And do the same to the back, and then I like to spray directly into the cart slot. Now it's all clean. Voila. Here's probably the most annoying part of the Game Boy Color. I guess this is technically optional now, but I'll tell you why I do it every time. Here is part of the ribbon cable for the LCD. Ribbon cables, very delicate. These are the cart slot pins, and all of these pins are very pokey. If you touch it with your fingers, it might hurt a little bit. I have calluses from playing guitar, it doesn't hurt. This rests right on these pins, and it is not worth it for me. I'd rather keep it safe, so we're gonna trim these pins. It doesn't have to be super good. One thing I will recommend, putting on some sort of eyewear, even if it's just glasses, like regular glasses or sunglasses, you're probably fine. And then I recommend grabbing something to cover it up while you do it. Just for the example so you can actually see it, what I do here, take the flush cutters, get around the pin, and just snap. This one's a little big, so you can do it a second time, but it doesn't really matter. And then you just keep doing it to every single one of these pins. I also recommend closing your mouth along with the eyewear, using something to cover it up while you're doing it, because once you snip these, the pins go flying and little pieces of pokey metal flying are not good. I'm gonna do a little time lapse busting through all these, and I'll see you in a second. And you're gonna have a bunch of metal crumbs here. Just do that. I'd even go back with your mom's toothbrush and make sure they're all off, because that would really cause a short. But I think that is all the preparation for the board we need to do. Just a friendly reminder to test your mod kits before fully installing them, unless you're like me and are okay with eating the cost of the mod kit if it arrives broken. To test it, you'll have to solder the power wire to C on the power switch and plug it in. If it's a V2.6, you don't have to solder to test. This kit comes with two longer wires and a shorter wire, and for some reason it still comes with a touchpad. You don't need the touchpad anymore. There's a touchpad built into the ribbon cable. If it looks like this, this is the touchpad, this square right here. Let's grab some solder, heat up your soldering iron, and we're gonna heat up this pad, and then push the solder into the iron and lift up. We're gonna do the same thing to start, and 
lift up. Then we're gonna take our two long wires. I recommend using some tweezers here, holding onto the wire. There's select, boom. Just reheat the solder, stick the wire in there. Hold the wire until you lift up and it stops bubbling. And then do the same thing to start. Make sure nothing is bridged here. What I mean by that is the solder touching the other solder or the wires sticking out and touching the other solder point. That would be causing a short and you don't want that. Flip this over and you'll see power right there. We're gonna add some solder to the power just like we did for start and select. Boom, got a little bit of solder on the P and power. That's okay. And then I recommend sticking your wire out to that side and soldering it down. You're actually gonna wanna solder to the other side because that's where the power switch is. If you want to, you can solder a wire to the touch sensor right there. That's just the pad to connect a touch sensor. And then you can connect this touch sensor to the wire and you can put this wherever you want. I recommend doing this and I'll show you how to set that up later. From here, I'm actually gonna put the soldering iron away because we don't need it right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the paper towel out. We're gonna stick the screen into here. I'm gonna do a little practice run to show you before I peel off the tape. Take like this, you're gonna stick it in kind of at a diagonal here. You're gonna to want to get that connector in and then make it so you can slide the screen part in like this, that little edge of the screen that sticks out. Get that underneath the shell and then it just fits in like a glove. But before you do that, that's why we did a practice run. This kit comes with this sticker right here. You put it on the back. That wasn't the most center. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Apparently that's for light bleed. I always thought it was to prevent the uh, ribbon cable, this ribbon cable from shorting on there. Apparently it's not. Maybe that's not metal, maybe it's just reflective. I don't know. I'm just, I'm terrified of shorting. And when I first started using these kits, I was getting a lot of shorts. So that's why I cover everything up, as you'll see in a moment. I just recommend putting it on there. It's not gonna hurt to take two seconds to put it on. There's also this sticker that covers up the bottom of the screen that sticks out. I think it looks stupid, so I never use it. It's a lot harder to connect the ribbon cable to the screen after you stick it down, so I recommend connecting it like this beforehand. But I'll show you how to do it if you already put the screen in. Now we can peel these little strips of double-sided tape that are already pre-applied this is one of the many reasons why I recommend not trimming your nails before modding. That's why they're a little long. And then you can stick it in just like I showed you before. Make sure you don't have to pull it up all the way and I don't recommend taking it off quite yet just to protect it. But make sure that you're not putting the plastic protective part in the uh, screen or else it's gonna be really hard to get the plastic peel off once you've stuck this down. Another one of the trickier parts, you can fold this little connector over into the connector slot, fold it over, and it should click once it's lined up. And you just push it in, and boom. Now that's in, we're all good. Now we can get to the rest of the soldering portion. Here's where the community is kind of divided on the subject. And by community being divided, I mean uh, it's me versus Natalie and probably everybody else. I like soldering to the test pads. Sue me. One, it's easier than soldering to the vias. Two, I like the look of the wires showing, especially when it's a, a clear case. If it's opaque, it doesn't matter. Then this argument is all stupid. Even with this shell, you're not going to see it. So why does it matter? Because there's a print over it. But anyways, I'm gonna solder to the test pads. It's a lot easier for first time people, but I will also show the VIA chart from Natalie herself. If you wanna solder to the VIAs, it's not my thing. But these wires are long enough to go to the test pads, so we're gonna go to the test pads. Get the soldering iron back out. We're gonna add some solder to P12 and P13. Those are the points for start and select. It's pretty hard to confuse them because they're right above the button they go to. Just like before, heat it up, push the solder in, boom. These are smaller areas of soldering, so if you need help, put a little flux there. 
it's gonna make your life a lot easier but 99 percent of solder has flux built in that's what the rosin core means that's why we heat up the pad and then push the solder in that will actually activate the flux the best at least in my experience and what i've been told i, I just learned this all from youtube so <laughs> now we can take our wires again make sure you grab the right one i'm going to start with start and it's easy connection then connect select to p12 boom then we can put the soldering iron down i lied this isn't the last bit of soldering we'll still have to do the power switch later this is where i take some kapton tape and we're going to tape a lot of stuff down real quick kapton tape is non-conductive that's why we use this specifically but i'm going to take a strip cut it and just lay it over the top of all those pins just make sure you're not covering any of the gold contact points because then you won't be able to press up but i saved covering it up till now so we can also maintain the wires so they're not going over any of these screw holes or any of the buttons the other thing that we're going to do right now is we're going to cover up these chips on this board here. I've had some shorting issues, a lot of shorting issues in the past with this touching the Game Boy Color motherboard. It doesn't take but a couple extra seconds to cover this up with Kapton tape to save you a headache in the future. Boom. And then sometimes, not all the time, I'll cover up this little chip with the start and select pads next to it but there we go all covered up now no biggie we're gonna put our buttons in a lot of the time these will be separated into the plastics and the silicones i wouldn't put the ir covered in just yet but we can put the d-pad and a and b in also not put the power switch in just yet a is on the outside b is on the inside and then you can put the membranes over the start and select in, and then the D-pad membrane over the top of that. And then just lay it back down like it was. Before you click anything into place, make sure the speaker is in the right spot. Sometimes it can be a tight tolerance. Boom. You're going to hear a click 99% of the time once you get it into place. Take the screws out. They're all the same color screws. So grab your three little Phillips heads. These should be the only Phillips heads included. And I'm just going to screw the center one down real quick. So we're all locked into place. We're going to stick this guy out like that. And we're going to push this into place. Just the reverse of pulling it out. Push the tabs down very gently but you gotta have some force in it and it might push up the other side again just keep pushing them down side to side until they're both in or if you have two free hands you can push them down at the same time from here we have to solder the power wire to C on the power switch this one's a little bit trickier you're probably gonna want to use some flux here heat it up press some solder in there It may not look like you're adding that much, but I added a little bit there. You can also pre tin the wire if you want, just by doing that with whatever solder you've got on your tip. Line it up, just put it right on top. Give it a little pull test to make sure. Do not pull it very hard. Very light pull, just to make sure it is not going anywhere. And if it doesn't go anywhere, you did good. If it does come off, it just means you didn't get it stuck down. Just keep trying, you'll get it. From here, we are done soldering. It'll be easier to see on the transparent cases, but make sure that this is lined up with the top of the case. Make sure there's just really not much of an air gap there. Some kits will come with a little tiny piece of double-sided tape. I've been doing this a lot and it works every time for me. Having it in this position, it's not going to go anywhere unless you get into it and physically touch the ribbon cable, but it's not going to, you shake it around, it's not going to move. And it's pressed up against the plastic enough that it's actually going to read your touches. So it's really not anything to worry about. But if you want to tape it down, you can. Some double-sided tape might be too thick, but this is plenty good. Now we can put our IR cover in and I will say that there have been a couple times where I've actually cracked the shell because these IR plates are a little too thick. 
just very carefully put it in and if it doesn't want to go in it's either upside down or it's gonna probably snap the plastic but you want to put it in like this where the whole side is up just push it lightly in there there will also be an actual translucent ir cover like this included in the screw bag there's only a few games that actually use the ir blaster but if you do one of these the signal's not gonna go through at all so there's the middle screw there's the left screw there's the right screw now the last piece of the puzzle before we snap it all together and screw the last six down with the power switch in i recommend putting the little yellow tab all the way down so it's off but it should look like this but everything should be in position take the battery cover off and put the back half on everything is looking nice you can't see the wires for those who are going to complain about that and then once again the six screw holes two up top two in the middle and two in the battery hole we're going with it battery hole now we can put our double a batteries in click our battery cover on boom one thing i will say with these shells in particular you might want to loosen these the tiniest bit the two screws around the power switch just a little tiny bit because the uh, power switch can get a little hard to push if it's too tight but over time it's going to wear the plastic down and it's going to be just like an original one and we can do the peel What? <laughs> there were two peels? <laughs> what? But this thing looks freaking sweet. And let's make it look sweeter. This is my favorite sticker. The 1-800 number for if you need repairs on your Nintendo devices. I don't think this number is in service anymore. All the legal info, the little serial number. So to change the color of the logo here which i think we're going to change it to purple you're going to press and hold start and select and it's going to light up game there game will change the vertical position hitting the touchpad will change it to boy i believe boy does the horizontal position those may be flipped and then hit the touchpad one more time and it'll highlight color now you can hit start to cycle through the colors and if you're like oh man i like that color back there you can hit select to go back that's actually a pretty clean color but i, I kind of want a purple i'm a big purple guy no, i'm not thanos I, I just like purple i like this color so you just hold start and select and once it gets all lit up then let go now let's test it make sure all the buttons are working if you want to adjust the brightness just tap it and it'll adjust the brightness Boom, all the buttons are working beautifully. So everything there is done. We have a beautiful Game Boy Color and that is as in-depth as I could possibly get, I think. I highly, highly, highly recommend this kit. I also highly recommend learning how to solder. I know it's really scary, but it's worth it for this kit. Maybe do some practice on something else. I have a really in-depth tutorial on the Game Boy Macro, which is just saving a broken DS Lite, turning it into a Game Boy Advance, one of the most comfortable Game Boy mods in my opinion. And I think it's a great starting place to learn how to solder. Plus all that stuff is really cheap. So if you break something like I did the first time I tried to do a macro, you're not gonna end up breaking all this expensive stuff. I will link that down below as well as at the end in the cards. I'll have a link to Retro Game Repair Shop down below. And obviously, if you wanna save 10%, use code Jake. I was not paid to do any of this, but you can pay me for this Game Boy right here if you wanna buy it, or this other one that I made alongside of it. For all of these, I usually make two, as well as my modding streams. So if you miss out on either of these, catch the streams on Mondays and Wednesdays. I build these live. I show everybody how to do it live as well. It's just a fun time to hang out with me. And even if you miss the streams, the VODs stay up on the channel and they don't always sell on stream. So just check the website periodically. I've got these ones up for sale right now. These ones still haven't been bought. Maybe you're not interested in the Game Boy Color and you want a Game Boy Advance, an SP, 
a macro. I haven't done DMG and pocket in-depth tutorials yet, but I'll have all of my in-depth tutorials linked down below as well as the end. If you're already subscribed and you want to come remember like these beautiful people right here, you can do that by hitting the join button down below. And whether you've done all, none, or some of that, we can all just listen to Britney. So like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. All right, let's call Nintendo. Hi, thank you for calling Nintendo. Let's connect you to a specialist quickly. Hello? Yeah, why are you shutting down the 3DS and Wii U eShop?